Hello and welcome to this week's Robin Pod, which is of course powered by Budget Ties Auto Centre, the only car specialist trusted by the players, club officials and supporters of Hull Kingston Rovers. And it's another special edition with former Hull Live Hull Kingston Rovers reporter Joe Appleyard joining me to discuss all things Hull KR. Firstly though, let's catch up with friend of the Robin Pod and Lee Leopard's owner, Derek Beaumont. How are you doing, Derek? I'm all right, mate. How are you, pal? I'm wonderful. Yeah, you're having a right, Looking forward you're having a, to... you're having a right time over there, aren't you? On the red, the red side of the city. Yeah, of course, mate. And as, as we record this, it's just been announced, hasn't it, that um, that lot from across the other side of the of the city have parted ways with former Hulkington Rovers head coach Tony Smith. So I'm sure there'll be many Robins listening and watching this will be revelling in the delight of the, the demise of the black and whites. And this is a another uh, comedy moment, shall we say, that, that seems to be following Hull FC around at the moment. Yeah, I just got told off, uh, off our kid, to be honest. I've not been looking on much social, but he just said uh, that that had happened. So, yeah, tough time for, tough time for uh, Adam as well. I mean, when you're getting whacked with 50 and, you know, you're trying to talk of a, a long-term plan and week in, week out, you're getting that and, some things that's coming out on Twitter with players and stuff. Yeah. You do end up, unfortunately, looking in the direction of the coach, don't you? Um, but then you're back to square one with no stability. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough merry-go-round for them, I think. Yeah, and I do wonder whether the, the provisional grade A IMG rating has allowed them that safety net of knowing that they could probably spend under salary cap this season without the... One million percent. One million percent. A perfect example of why it don't work and why it should just be absolutely chucked out of the pram. I mean, I'm 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 praying that London gets some some wins from somewhere and don't finish bottom because then we'll be an absolute joke shop if we relegate a team that hasn't finished bottom. And can you imagine if Wakefield didn't win Super League and got put in? It didn't win Championship and got put in. Fed won it or something. It's just absolutely bonkers. And you know, you, you look at. You look at how the whole thing's structured. You know, if you if you've got a carpet like we've got, great plain surface. I'd argue it's the best in uh, in the comp. Um, you know, it's used for FIFA. Uh, it's the only FIFA accredited one that, that I know for the women's. And you know, we can't get a score because we have a pitch of that quality because it means that it gets relayed every year. So for three weeks you can't play on it, so you don't get points for it. It's like it's not actually. It's not rewarding the right things, is it? And then you've got a situation where, based on your geograph uh, geographical status, you, you can't score on that. You know that that in itself is madness. You should be promoting the game anywhere. You know you can get fans in PNG, Toronto, so. Derek, we just lost you there slightly because I think dodgy internet connections. People won't know you're taking time out your holiday to come and appear on the Robin Pod, so it is much appreciated. But obviously, you were saying, you know, ultimately, you're not a massive fan of the the IMG grading criteria at the moment. Yeah, there's, there's just too many examples of it that don't work, and, and I think the LFC one's a prime one. You know, Adam's always been somebody that. You know, you, they've always put something strong out there, and then I think once you get a grade A and you think, well, the pressure's off, you can wind it back a little bit, and you, you don't need to be as pressured on what you do with your squad. I mean, I don't know what he's spending, anybody can only guess, can't they? But people think it's it's less than previous. Um, the, the very day that I did all my financial rearrangements to get what, what was then at that time 15 points, uh, Chesley rang me and said he'd done the deal with Moylan. You know, and I said, you don't need to do the deal with Milan, mate. We've got 15 points. We're fine. We don't need to be worried about winning, which obviously I still did do the deal with Milan, but you yeah. kind of get the point. 
Do you, so do you think this season's a bit of a free hit for some some clubs? And 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 do you think that, you know ultimately the test will be in the second season? What it to see if clubs then go spend up to salary cap and and um, really go for it because it is a bit of a, a transition season. Yeah, and I mean if you actually look at the the, the situation now, you know I'm, I, we, we're one win. And our game in hand that we've not played against Wigan, who, in my opinion, are the best team in the comp at the minute. So, um, you know, but I'm not sat here nervous, worried, you know, that, or, you know, we could end up getting relegated. For, you know, not just because uh, I've got a good enough squad uh, and we're struggling with what we're able to put on the field at the minute, but because I know I can get 15 points with IMG. Yeah. And, and I wonder, does. You know the the, the the investment that's come from supporters and the businesses who support in the club. I suppose that gives you a an added responsibility to to invest back into the club to to justify their, the support that they're giving you. Uh, you know, since getting promoted to Super League and, and then obviously on the back of the Challenge Cup victory. Yeah, it does. But I mean, ultimately, I just want to win. So mm. you know, I, I do it because I'm a fan myself, and I want us to win. You know, I want to one day win Super League. I want to one day win a grand final. Um, you know, it's a dream to win the Challenge Cup. We've done it. Um, it's, it, it's a big effort to try and defend that. Probably none bigger than having to come to your gaff again. Um, yeah. You know, so but I think as long as people are true to themselves and they want to win, um, then they will invest in the club. Clearly, our fans are investing in it and our sponsors and, you know, commercially, we've grown a lot, um, <clears throat> which means a little less pressure on me, but I can look at other areas like, you know, the academy and reserves and, uh, women's etc. We've got all of those going as well now, which we uh, we didn't have. So, you know, the more the more investment we get in, the better. But winning definitely takes care of everything, and we're starting to feel a bit of tension around our place from our fans, as you would expect. And mm. you know, you, you you look and you think, well, maybe come to OKR okay, and uh, you know we're missing players. Uh, you know, everybody misses them. I don't like to complain about that. Your squad's there to. It's disrespectful to the players that are taking the the place, but you know, you, you have your best players. That are regarded that for a reason, and any team that's stripped of, you know, four of what was in the dream team is going to struggle. So you guys are in fine form, scoring loads of points. Last time we come there, we got as, uh, ourselves as as his Andy back to us, didn't we, with a, uh, a big score line. So it's all on the cards. I'm no doubt you're all feeling pretty confident <laughs> over there, and uh, looking forward to getting us with uh, with a little bit of a limp of that. Yeah, and I'm not buying into anything you've just said because I remember when he very first came on the podcast, there was some sob story about Lee and about the the mighty old uh, and Rose and how you know, and then and then what happened? Um, <laughs> you went and got the victory. So I'm not buying into anything yeah, that you say now. <laughs> we end up with you guys in the cup a lot, though, don't we? You know, I, I think near enough. Uh, I, it's hard to think of a year when we've not um, come across you guys in the cup. But I think it's a great tie, though, don't you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a rerun of the. The final. I think on 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 both of our days. I think you know that it's it is a one point either way game, isn't it? You know both both teams. I just think home advantage is significant, and I thought that's what was in that playoff game as well. I think if we'd have got that, um, I was speaking to Willie Peters after it at Old Trafford, and he was of a similar mindset that he felt whoever got the home tie on it got the advantage, um, and I do genuinely think that's the case now. But uh, I've scrambled anyway, mate. I've just we've just signed Dwyer for uh, the rest of this year and next. Took over his contract so that he can uh, grace the field. Um, so we, you know we won't be coming with our tails between our legs. We'll be coming having a go. You can uh, rest assured about that. Yeah, and Willie Peters mentioned in his um, pre-match press conference yesterday. There's a bit of a, a nice mini rivalry between the two clubs at the moment. I don't think you call it a friendly rivalry, but a, a healthy rivalry and and. and you know, I, I suppose us uh, both sides being drawn against each other um, in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup is the TV dream as well, isn't it? That that's a, a great game for them to be able to put on an, an almost prime time and Saturday Saturday tea time viewing. It, it it is building up to a a really exciting game on Saturday. That's great for both clubs, that in it as well, and all our commercial partners. So that can only be you know great for the sport and great for us going. I think I think like friendly rivalry or you know there's there's obviously a fierce the competitive nature between both teams and, and the fans, you know, get vocal and, and get stuck in there. And we've all got our hardcore ones of them. But I do genuinely think it's two friendly clubs, you know, uh, uh, Neil Woodrow and, and, and two clubs that are 
making noises for the right reasons probably in in the way that they are going and the way that they are growing uh, and developing so um it's good to see us uh, clash again on the field and as you say the tv take it on the prime spot as well at five o'clock on a saturday um I, I reckon we'll get quite a few people uh, watching it i just uh, I just hope uh, it's not a tough day at the office for me sat in there because it's a tough place to come even as a uh, as an owner and sit in that stand because you guys don't have to, to dish it out in there. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and of course you'll be pleased that you, you're able to view the game and you don't have to follow it on Twitter as well. <laughs> That's for sure, mate, as well, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to have a day off the beer, I think, that day. Yeah, I mean, what do you make of the Challenge Cup? Obviously, the, you're the holders. Um, you know, if you if you believe some people, you'd think the competition's dead and buried. I, I don't buy into that. I think it's it's still renowned around the world. But um, I mean, we saw with the coverage of the of the last round, it, it wasn't great, was it? In terms of the coverage we got um, from the BBC and, and the exposure it got, um, uh, it's a difficult one, isn't it, to, to sort of reimagine? Because ultimately, if you put the Super League clubs in lower down in, in earlier rounds, the amateur clubs, the champion, uh, League One Championship, they're going to suffer as a, as a result. So it's a it's a difficult one to to try and I don't know. Did, uh, I want to bring back to life, but difficult to do something with. It is, but I think I think we're just we're, we're guilty of allowing broadcasters to downvalue our sport and tell us that it isn't worth what we think it is, um, and that just needs some strong. Uh, from, if you will, our leadership to, to respond to that and say, now this is what it's worth. And, and I think, you know, if we can keep building this Super League Plus streaming platform and we can add more content to that, you know, we should be doing things like, um, you know, for example, when we've got Asiata up on a charge, you could, you could actually do that live on Super League Plus and let people see what goes on, let people see how the case is presented by the RFL, how it's defended, people can have an opinion on it, you could even have a pundit or two running over it at the end and fans could have a phone in and stuff we could assess the the referees positively and negatively look at at something around that get that touch screen thing what sky seems to dismiss with john wells on the create loads of content so that's the go-to place that you would want to buy or watch your rugby league rather than sky and then they can see when you've got that number of followers we can actually monetize that with adverts you know all of that commercially can just be grown so much more and i think you know, with the with the Challenge Cup, um, I, people say it's lost its magic, don't they? But I think last year proved it's not because we won it after 52 mm-hmm. years and it's like, what was it, 40 years since you guys were last there uh, and you're vying taking it seriously uh, to win it. I think anybody who does seriously enjoys it. I think what we could do with it is we could do something similar to what they do in the women's game. So you could have sort of, if you took, say, your top eight Super League, I, I've always believed the game's probably 212s or, or maybe even 210s. Um, if, if you take your top eight Super League sides that finished one to eight, and then you take your next eight sides in terms of positioning, so four and, and four, and then you, your third uh, lot of that into the, the champ one and create some mini uh, round robins of three and draw it out that way so that the Super League club has to play away against the lowest ranked uh, team so that then there's going to be some kind of commercial money spin off for them on a gate maybe um, and there is that little bit of potential because you are creating potential giant killings it might not happen obviously because it's, it's, it's a big ask but you're creating the potential for it and you're adding more games to to the competition I think that's something that could be looked at yeah, I wonder, Derek, do you, re- do you reckon there's appetite amongst other owners and maybe head coaches and players for more games? Um, I um, mean, from a commercial point of view, it, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, sorry, I wouldn't say we need to be playing more games. We, I'd be getting rid of those loop fixtures straight yeah. out of there. Um, so, you know, you, you, get, you just get straight down to, I'd reinvent magic as well. I'd get rid of that um, because... You know, I wouldn't get rid of magic as in get rid of magic. I'd have the event, but it would be something like a, a nines comp um, where you play numerous games over the uh, two days and make it on a bank holiday weekend so that, you know, people can go up there and they're not having to, to go back on the Sunday night. You could even inv- invite a rugby union side or, or two into it. You know, you just put a prize pool in the um, for, for first and second or something like that. And create that as a, a separate comp and then you just have a straight home and away traditional one game against each club at home one game uh, away 
and your, your challenge cup can put those other fixtures in that some owners are, are, are you know not wanting to lose for the income side of things and then the other thing with the challenge cup as well if, if you've got that stability of knowing those games in the early part you can include them in your memberships as well and then that way you'll get some better attendances for them yeah and Derek, you're not um, you're not afraid to say what you think. I think at the start of March, you, you'd said that um, you've been silent for too long, um, and then you had the, the Super League owners meeting. Did anything change as a, as a result of of that meeting? Yeah, I mean, listen. To be fair, you know, the, the Robix in particular, um, I, you know, I, I think's a, a really good uh, quality person in there, and he works tremendously hard, and a lot has been done and changed in and around behind the scenes. Um, that's who I have my most most contact with. Obviously, Tony Sutton's above that. Um, you know, so there's, there's there's meetings going on in and around. I just think we need to use more um, of the skills within the sport from the various owners. We've got some intelligent, uh, clever people in there, but we seem to want to flood it with non-executive directors that we're, we're paying money for. Um, and, and that, you know, I don't see what's produced. Um, you know, you've got to have a a certain type of board round about Sports England and the government, etc. But you know, people have got to produce their worth. If they're taking money out of the sport, they've got to be bringing more than that to it. Uh, that's just basic, um, basic business. So I just think um, you know, we spent. If you look at what's being spent in that area, and then you look at what's being spent with IMG, then I, I just think there's a hell of a lot of money there. What could be massively invested into Super League Plus, making that a great platform. Uh, and into marketing and, and growing the game. You know, this 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 nigh on 700k, 750 grand. The what I don't see what we're spending effectively or producing. So if it was my business and I was spending 750k in that area, I'd be doing something about it. Yeah, there's a lot of money in the in, in, in tied up in off field stuff, and and like you said, it's it's about proving the worth. Um, I mean, I just saw I think before we came on to speak about. How the RFL are losing three figure sum every season on in Odsal, and they're not able to get rid of the lease on there. And there's some some bad decisions that seem to get made that to, to the bloke on the street, uh, you know, the woman on the street, just don't seem to make sense sometimes. Yeah, it, I mean, you know, I, I think if we utilise the strength of the clubs, uh, and not just Super League clubs, you know, there's some good people in and amongst um, other clubs, you know, I mean, and, and you look at in and around there, people, you know might not like Nigel Wood from when he was in and around at, uh, at the RFL, but personally, I have a lot of time for him. I think he's a highly intelligent person. Uh, and he brought the sport, the biggest ever TV deal it's had. Um, and I don't think he'd be sat saying, oh, yeah, we appreciate it. It's going to be worth a lot less. And, you know, led to believe we've done well getting 21 and a half because they told us it's only worth 17. You know, that's like, you know, me telling someone my debt's only worth a grand and, and then I've done well to get 1,500 for it. You know, it, the, the sport is worth what it once was worth, and it gets less than half of what it did. So it means something uh, doing about it. And I think the people are within the game at the clubs who can significantly help do it. Yeah. And, the, you know, we, we mentioned about the Challenge Cup final last season. I mean, you boys will be desperate to, to retain that. I mean, winning it's one thing, isn't it? To retain it as well, you know, that would be a massive yeah. achievement. I mean that you know it's 50, 52 years of fact we won it in twenty one seventy one and then twenty three uh, jolt minus COVID uh, COVID twenty one so it's kind of like fifty years apart. Um, it's a massive it's a massive ask to back it up. I think I think there's only four or five clubs ever done that. Mm -hmm. um, when I was looking at it on the on the trophy, um, so that'd be huge. Um, and you know I won't make no secret about it. I'll be uh, I'll be not sick if uh, if you guys turn us over. Um, at your place, um, but then at the same time, I've got a lot of mates who uh, are Robin's fans. That's why I'm always happy to come and have a chat on here. I think a decent club, and so you know, as much as um, it not much for sick uh, losing, um, I kind of also be pleased that you guys get a chance to uh, go and do it because the way you lost it was horrible, really. You know, it's, it wasn't any way to want to you know see lose a game so. Mm -hmm. If you did beat us, I want to see you go on and uh, and win it. Yeah, hey, that sport, you know, you you know, you can't always pick how you win and lose, can you? And, and no. I suppose that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, we're going to probably see uh, two two of the best halfback partnerships on Sean Saturday. 
Um, I mean, Moylan, what a fantastic coup it was to bring him over. Experienced NRL player. Um, Lamb, of course, we know what he can do. Uh, pitting yeah. the weeks against Mikey Lewis and Tyrone May. I mean, it does promise to to be a real entertaining game of rugby. I mean, how important has Moylan been to, to you guys and obviously Lamb as well, co- continuing where he left off last season? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, he had the he had the game and half out with the um, you know mess to his knee, um, so they've not had a lot of time together. Preseason was a little bit disjointed um, in terms of uh, you know the overseas players being away, while we're playing for PNG, and then the time that we we got Milan here, so it was only kind of around the camp. So it's something that's getting better. Uh, week on week is that part of it um, and I think I do think a lot will be determined in that game by how that goes um, you know we we, we hopefully um, get some fire back in the in the forwards we had Malone and we've had a moan out for a while and we had Malone out last week as well so um, I'm hoping that those two uh, names can be back on the team sheet um, we signed Brad Dwyer now so that gives us that additional um you know, pushed there from nine while Edwin's uh, still out the race. But I do think Lamb and Moylan need to have a really big game and in particular a decent kicking game as well because, uh, you know, we, we know what May and Lewis can do and you've just got, you've got pace uh, from out there and then you've got your threats on your edges as well. So you've got to, you know, not kick that ball to Ryan Hall. Uh, but for some reason, people keep doing it. Um, and, it, you know, it drives me insane. I'm like, just don't kick the ball to him. Um but no, I, I, I think it'll be a game with um, points in it because both teams are def- definitely attacking. We've not quite been nailing as many as we'd like at the moment uh, and we're certainly conceding more than we uh, we would be happy with. Um, so I know we'll be trying to tighten that up, but it's easier said than done. You know, you can look at, w- at what Lewis and May and the rest of your boys do and know what's coming, but defending it is a different matter. Um, and then that kind of atmosphere that you creating there it's probably i would go as far as saying i think it's the hardest place to go and get a win is okay huh? yeah i mean the, the i don't think they've lost at home since july last yeah. year um so they've got a great record at the moment and and we are really making that craven park into a bit of a fortress so you know it's always been a tough place to play but i think in the past teams have been able to come away with cheap victories whereas we seem yeah. to be shutting up shop at the moment. Um, I suppose, lastly, Derek, we owe you a bit of thanks for, for bringing Oliver Gildart over early. Um, I remember at the time a few <laughs> Rovers fans raised eyebrows at that, but I do think him coming home early and, and settling himself back in, I think we're paying, getting the dividends of that now because he's someone who's, I mean, he's missing on, on Saturday's HIA again, uh, so hopefully he gets sure. well soon. But, yeah, he, he's hit the ground robbing, uh, hit the ground running at the Robins. And, and yeah, I do think it's down to, to you boys bringing him over early. He's a good, uh, he's a good. Like I may have told you last time, he's he, he's a good player. He's a good bloke. Uh, he's a, he's a good pro. Uh, he's got speed and good agility, and he, he can find the line. So he, he, you know that's why he's doing a decent job. For you. I didn't know he had a, a HIA. So who else have you got missing? Anyone else? Uh, Sam Luckley. He's the they're the only two missing. So Gildart, uh, yeah, it's second game in a row he's missed due to HIA, and then Sam Luckley one match suspension. Other than that, we're pretty much at full strength. Oh, and of course Ben Reynolds, he's missing. He's cup tied. A player that you're familiar with. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ben, well, but I don't think he'd be uh, getting it. I think that's more of an insurance one for you, isn't it? Really, to to be honest, when you've let um, when you've let. Uh, his name's gone to um, Abdul, yeah, go over to Catalan. So you just needed that bit of a backup, there, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. And, and the Robins are, you know, I think they are desperate, like yourselves, to, to get that, to get back to Wembley and, and hopefully right a, a wrong and, and come away with a trophy. But it starts on Saturday. And, and like I said, Derek, hope you have a safe journey over. Enjoy the game. Yeah, uh, will do. Get a warm, warm reception. Yeah, but you'll definitely give me that, mate. I get there's uh, there's a few people in there. Don't mind having a bit of banter, but it's all good faith, mate. And uh, made the best team win. And uh, I hope whoever does win goes on and wins it. Yeah, and one last question: If people listen to this on podcast, they won't be able to see you. But if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that you're in leopard print. Is he any day you don't wear leopard print? Mate, not not so often. I've got. Uh, I'm, I'm full kit wanker today, so uh, <laughs> knocking down the boat. And uh, last night was uh, formal night, so I had a not the Wembley leopard suit on, but uh, a different a different leopard jacket. Yeah, so 
been having a crack round here with a few uh, a few people, but you'd be surprised how much Leopard Prince on it. Joe, as ever, always appreciative to hear well, from uh, and Derek Bowman. He's not afraid to say what he thinks. Yeah, really. Um, really um, really 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 obviously, he's a character in EU. Provides a lot of Super League, you know, support that Super League. To be honest, though, Derek, I bet there's plenty of Leopard Prince, but I bet it's more bikinis and buddy smugglers than it is. I think he's the one that he's wearing. Yeah, he's a bit of an enigma. You don't know what you're going to get with him. I don't yeah. agree with some of the stuff he does, but yeah, I, I understand he's great for exposure. Me, and he's, he's always been good, obviously, when me and you all said the poddy came on. Yeah. Obviously, you've kept in touch with him and that, so he's always up for a chat. And yeah, even though there is that little bit of rivalry between the Robins and the Leopards now, he has always got time for Rovers as a club. But yeah, he's, um, he's a bit like Marmite, isn't he, sometimes, old Deza? Yeah, I mean, I, I, all I'll say is, um, yeah, whatever he says, and and I think half his problem is he he says it when he's had a beer, uh, yeah. but he's got a very successful business. He owns a Super League club, you know, he's doing something right. So he, he's got a leopard skin Lamborghini, which is, of course we all want. So he must be he must be doing something right. It must be. It's not better than my Seat though. I might paint it red and white on Saturday and park it next to his. See what, see how many photos I get with man. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, it's great to have you back on the Robin pod. Um, I mean, it seems a long time ago. It was only last week. Robert, the Robins, 50 points to 10 victory over London. Um, 40 points to four up at half time. Um, it, it went the way we all predicted. Although some supporters frustrated that we didn't capitalise in the second half and, and build on that 40 point lead that we got at, uh, at the half time. But I don't know. I don't it was it, it although the scoreline suggests it was a, a one-sided game, if he was there watching it, London, to their credit, made it very competitive. Mate, they did, and, and it frustrated me, and I know it's probably frustrated you when fans were saying they was frustrated themselves. I mean, yeah. you can spin it two ways, can't you? Look a few days prior when Wigan did that against Lee and put the queue on the rack, everyone was going, That's the sign of a good team. Rovers <laughs> do it, and it's oh, they the, the take the foot off the gas and they're not interested in the second half and they'll struggle against the big teams. I don't believe in that narrative. Look, as a professional rugby player, Rovers did the job in, in that first half, and you know what? They played some absolutely outstanding stuff. Forget all the opponents where this is a London team that's ran a few teams close. Yeah, they're still a million miles away from Super League level, but they posted 24 points on Wigan. They should have beat all FC. They've had a dig against other teams. And, and you know what? They, they, had a, they had a go at Craven Park, didn't they? But Rovers were just too slick in attack. And yeah, it was frustrating that the second half we only scored two tries. I, at the moment, at the time, I probably came out thinking oh, it could have been 60-70 that, but it's two points at the end of the day. The last four weeks, we've absolutely annihilated everybody that stood in front of our way. You know, even going the Uddersfield game as well. I know that was only a 12-point win, but we dominated them on the pitch. And yeah, it's about time the people just, you know, get used to that. The job was done and would have all loved to have seen them at 67 70, 80, but that, that's not what Rovers are doing. The the grinding teams out in the first half, they're putting on a show, and in the second half, they're mixing it up. I mean, you only have to look at what the third team was at the full time whistle and who would have took off and who Willie had put in different positions. It was a very pre season vibe, one in that second half, and it was just great to get the two points. I thought Rovers played really well. Everyone's ticking along nicely now. I know we'll speak about the combinations and that soon, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed some of the tries. But hats off to London, you know, they give it a go. You do feel a bit sorry for them sometimes. Times, but they're enjoying the ride and, and they'll be peeved off that they, they got hammered at Rovers because their coach Mike Eccles I don't know if you've listened to it mate but his post-match presser he's not one for going yeah yeah we had a dig he was fuming with that first half performance and there was obviously going to come out and give it a show so yeah another two points on the board we've got bigger and better opponents coming up but you can only play what's in front of you yeah, and, and I suppose that that frustration that some supporters felt was on the back of the, the Derby victory where, um, you know, we conceded mm. some points in that second half and we, we never really got going in terms of uh, our our attacking rugby league. But I, I suppose the, the point is, though, Joe, the game was never in doubt, was it? it was, the result was never in doubt. And I, and I, and I, I don't want to say arrogance, but, you know, like London did against against the Robins, they kept plugging away. They kept going despite the scoreline. And, and it, they are difficult to play against, regardless of how many points you've already got in the bag. 
They are, and I, and I don't care what anybody says from a Rovers point of view. Of course, they wanted to come out and in the man they're going, and Willie will say in the post match, we don't want to take our foot off the gas stuff. But it's natural as a player when you come out in the second half and the wind's blowing at Craven Park and you're 40 points to four up, whatever it was, there is going to be a hint of complacency. There is going to be a hint of, look, the job's done, let's kick it into touch, get a complete our sets. And that's what Rovers were doing. I know there was a few mistakes, but it wasn't like there was thrown out the backsides and but they turned into a team that couldn't attack. They turned into that grand, into that NRL style rugby that Willie likes when it's just kicking it up, defending, getting some defence practice in as well. So for me, I, I have no qualms with what they've been doing in the second half against Hull and against um, London. You know, the, the Salford game, they turned it on in the second half because they knew there was against better opponents and they knew the game wasn't dead and buried there. And they ended up putting another three, four trials on, didn't they, in the second half, whatever it is there. And I imagine the same will happen in the coming weeks. You know, obviously I'm not expecting 40, 50 points against our next few opponents. But, you know, if Rovers are in control, there is going to be that more intensity and it is going to be a little bit different. But I think fans have got to understand when the teams, the bigger teams, and I'll put Rovers in that bracket, like Wigan have been, like Saints have been at times this year, even Warrington, when they're coasting, they do, they do take the foot off the gas a little bit. That's just natural. It's frustrating to watch, but it is just natural as a sports, you know, sportsman. Yeah, yeah. And a um, few changes in personnel, uh, most notably Ben Reynolds uh, making his old Kingston Rovers debut. He sat on the bench, as did Corey Hall. Um, and we also saw Louis Senior lining up on the right edge. I mean, if if supporters were at the, um, the, the Open training session, the captain's run that they, they held... Uh, the day before, uh, they were known that, that they were pretty much shoe on into play. As I've noticed as well, that Jez Litton was was going to be arrested because his his involvement was limited um, at the captain's run. And, and I suppose the changes, I mean, the Reynolds and Corey Hall when they came on in the second half, they did. I don't know. We looked a little bit clunky, didn't we? We just seemed to be. And then, of course, James Batchelor going to thirteen as well. Mm. It did affect the flow of the game, um, but. You know, like I said, the game was won and, and it was good for them to get some minutes on the pitch. Although I don't think um either Reynolds or Hall really really did too much to, to impress upon us, but it was good to see him out on the pitch in the first place. Yeah, it was. I think you can add Lewis Senior into that cat, you know. Mm. I don't, you know, I don't want to call somebody out on that, but I don't think he'll be in the 17 this week. You know, he, he had a chance, didn't he? And I don't think he really took it. Whereas Corey Hall and Ben Reynolds, probably you're in there because it's their time to have a bit of game time, like you mentioned. And I, I, I do see something in Corey Hall. And people, I think people are quite quick to slam him. And the kid's only 21. I know Willie always bangs on about that. And I don't think he's found his feet yet, his position. I'd like him to go to Featherstone a few and play in that division because I feel like he hasn't gone there yet, has he? Because he's been on the periphery of our side. Ben Reynolds, yeah, it's always tough coming in as a halfback when, you, when your team's coasting. And, you know, I don't think he wanted to pass it. He must have had a few quid on him to score because he seemed to dummy every time he go near the line. But, yeah, he'll be grateful for the minutes because, again, he's not going to get any, again, for a few, you know, however long many games it is, we'll make him. May stay fit or suspension free, touch wood, that's till the end of the season. But, yeah, it's, it's always nice to see some fringe players get some minutes and we're in a position now where we can use them in a Super League game and not be panicking too much and going, oh, my God, we're having to play the A, B and C now. It's, all right, yeah, we've got London, but A, B and C, we know the standards they've got to set. They know they've got to hit them standards and if they don't, they'll be pulled next week. And I think that's the beauty of this Rovers team under Willie Peters and the beauty of this Rovers team with the depth they've got this year. Every, there's people waiting in the wins and there's people nowhere near the side that a few years ago would have killed to have in the side. Yeah, and I mean, Corey Hall, he's impressed upon Willie Peters in pre-season. <laughs> Willie Peters has tasked him with with trying out a different position just to give him more opportunity to play. I mean, we're stacked up in the centres, aren't we? So you'd imagine Corey Hall's opportunity to play is limited there. The fact he's now trying him at, at second row gives him another opportunity to still be playing for, a, a, for the jersey. So I suppose, you know, the, the, his, his place on the bench was reward for that. And that, I think a lot of people as well, um, what surprised me is how tall he is as well. You know, yeah. it's been, and if anyone's watched the... Uh, the Newcastle game, NRL game, uh, and seeing Kai Pierce Paul um, downstorming his way through, through he's, he's the, like the leggy, the rangy, leggy kind of. It's a uh, it, you don't see many of them plays in Super League, but they're hard to tackle, aren't they? And hard to bring down. So yeah, let's see where that goes, where it goes with them. 
Yeah, you know, he's uh, he is one for the future, and he's great that he's getting minutes now. But like I said, I'd love to see him go on loan to Featherstone. I'd even mm. like to see him like where Reese Butterworth did even go play for London a few games this year. He's going to be a good player, but he's a few years away from this team. He probably knows it, but it doesn't mean I think in rugby, especially in the UK, you get this idea, don't you? Because if they're not playing every week and we haven't got this reserve system, you think, oh, they might as well get rid of him in that. Whereas with the likes of Corey Hall, he's three, four years down the track, could be Rovers' his next centre or Rovers' his next back rower so yeah I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do just hope he can get like Leo's doing at Featherstone like Yusuf Hardin is Louis Gorman just get as many minutes I'm a big advocate of it get as many minutes away from Craven Park in senior rugby and then when you're ready to come back to Craven Park you'll have them experience and minutes under your belt yeah nine tries scored against the Broncos Matty Parcell with a hat-trick James mm. Batchelor with two Hiku again Mikey Lewis um, Hall, Tanganoa. Um, I mean, like you've already mentioned, some of the rugby league in that first half. I mean, you know, exceptional attacking, speed, skill, you know, everything that as a rugby league support you want to see, you know, and, and the fact it was looking to Rhodes who were producing that was great. See, I think Michael Lewis was, was pivotal as well. I think his game seems to have gone on to a, a, another level since. Since last season, since the England caller, and, and probably a hard pre season, I know for a fact he was doing extra work. Um, even when it, um, I think it was announced Mikey Lewis would be coming back a little bit later, he wasn't, he was still working. Yeah. He just went with the main group, so you know, he was pivotal to that, that first half display of probably total dominance. Uh, you, you run out of words, don't you? And again, you be careful because you know the opponents are and that. But it does this every single week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's great. He's great that he's here. He's great that he's had a long term deal. And him and Will, I don't know if you've listened to it yet, but Willie was the guest on um, BBC's podcast. It's worth a listen. It's Willie goes in depth on Mikey and certain OKR players. And what he said about him is he said he's become a man since that England camp. He said he's not this erratic young boy anymore. He said he is at training. He's reading. He's you know he's banging. To his photography, he's taking a more calm and composed at life, really. And he said that's yeah. helping him on the field. He's a lot more talkative, his communication skills are growing all the time. And yeah, the the, the world, the sky's the limit for him, isn't they? I hope it's in red and white for as long as long as possible. Um, and I hope we can keep him for throughout his career because he's I, I always say it, I didn't at first, and I've changed my mind, you know, as the years have commenced. If he keeps going the way he's going and this team keeps going the way he keeps going, he can be one of the best that's ever yeah. pulled on the shirt. If he can have the longevity and yeah. go for an extra 10, 12 years at OKR and keep producing these performances and getting better, and hopefully in a winning team that's picking up silverware, there's no reason why he won't be dubbed one of the best because he's he's got all the potential and I think everybody not just in Super League in the world probably knows it now and he's great that he's you know um, at Rovers he's got a great foil in Tyrone May as well hasn't he? I mean people talk he about three campaigns he playing rugby league in a dinner jacket well I mean I'll tell you what Tyrone May is like James Bond at the moment he's just he's untouchable almost he is. I love, I love um, obviously, Campo came on the pod, didn't he? But I think, um, you know, no disrespect to him, I think Tyro May has done more in these yeah. seven, eight games than Campo did in two years mm -hmm. at Rovers. But, um, yeah, I, I, I was... I couldn't really get my head about around Tyrone at the first few games of the season. I was like, has he ever trained with his team? But, you know, when you, when you take a step back and you look back at what he does, not just in attack, in defence, yeah, he, he's perfect. He's perfect for Mikey Lewis. Um, and obviously, there was questions asked at the beginning of the season with a half-back dilemma um, and what was going to happen at OKR. And I think Willie's proven why he's invested into Tyrone May. So calm, so collected on the ball and I think he's every single week's getting a little bit more into it a little bit more I know he's a bit, if he was any more laid back he'd fall asleep on the pitch but I think he is more he's invested in this club now and he seems to love it um, he's very vocal on his Instagram and that and it's our Romeo and Mikey seem to have a good bond off it as well which is always great and yeah this halfback partnership if it can tick and it can hit new heights then this Rovers team can do whatever because they both complement each other and they're both on the day world class yeah, and I did notice um, Hulkinson Rovers lone plower Jordan Abdo yeah, uh, suffered an injury. Yeah, and, you know, and it's it's almost like six rounds in, seven rounds in, you get to April, you see exactly what he can do, and then you know picks up an injury, misses a few weeks, and it just goes on that spiral of in and out. And and I think this is you know the the, the performances put on by May and Lewis means Willie Peters was fully justified and. 
in what he did. I mean, at, at the time, obviously, people questioned it. But, yeah, here, here we are now. Yeah, of course. And obviously, you don't wish an injury on a person no. at all. But it's And it's not a, we told you so. It's a nothing like that at all. It is just a case of, this has happened four times for Rovers. And unfortunately, Jordan is an absolute unbelievable player. But he's, he's, I think it was his hammy again, wasn't it? I didn't watch it. Um, I was out on Saturday. But apparently, it's his hamstring. He's not in the Catalans 21. Steve Mack will do his press as soon, probably, and say the injury update. But it didn't look good. And yeah, I think Rovers, I think it's good that Rovers' his halfbacks are clicking as well. Well, because if at the start of the season, if Abdul had been winning these man of the matches like he had been in the south of France and May and Mikey weren't quite working or was losing more than we was winning, then you know what the brigade would have been out, wouldn't they? But yeah, it fully justified for what they did and I think they complement each other and there's a real good balance um, and I'm really impressed with all the new signings, to be honest. Um, I think they've all been brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned balance there, Joe. Um, I think Derek Beaumont, he, he said in when I spoke to him... Um, why do people keep kicking it to Ryan Hall? Why do the teams <laughs> keep doing it? Um, because he's so devastating, isn't he? He's the leading Rovers players think for me has made. Um, why people still keep doing it? But this season, and you mentioned balance, we are so much more balanced out we on the right and left, and and we can go both sides. And, and our attacking prowess is is equal on 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 the left and the right. They are, and I think that's probably credit to like Joe Burgess as well. I think he's since he came in, um, um, I think he's been great. You know, he's meters out of back play as well. You don't realise how many meters we are making through the likes of Hiku, Tanganoa, Jesse Sue's up to his game. And when you watch games, I think the Salford Cup game, the Hull game, um, obviously the overall game as well in round one and the most recent one. There's not a moment where there's even like an attacking, apart from London's tries um, and the odd FC one, the one they got through Cam Scott, there's not a moment where you think they're going to concede as well. They're just strangling teams. It is very NRL style. We'll do five, four drives, try something fancy. If not, if we don't score, it's absolutely fine now. Gone are the days of panicking on the last and trying to throw it out your backside. They will, if there's something on, try something out or nothing, but more times than not. Mike is kicking games very aerial now, so is Taro. May. And the second the fullback or the wingers catch the ball, who's there? Three or four Rovers players. They love defending. They love winning the territory battle. And we've seen it so many times through the likes of Elliot Minchella and Bachelor now. Whenever the force and error or the complete are set, they celebrate like it's a try. And that is what you have to do to be in that top echelon of Super League or the NRL. Defence wins matches. And that's why Rovers are, are nearly at the top of the tree at the minute with the likes of Warrington and that, because they're the teams who enjoy it without the ball as much as with the ball. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think we are second in Super League for try scored. So mm. I know people are frustrated we aren't putting 100 past London, but we're still scoring plenty of tries. Yeah. One one thing that did improve as well Joe, against London was our kicking game in terms of <laughs> conversions. Mikey Lewis, uh, seven kicks. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, the players helped him a lot uh, in terms of where they placed the ball down, but he still did have some difficult kicks. And, and if you'd have watched that game, and you'd never seen any of Rovers games before, and he was kicking, you'd have thought he'd have been kicking all season. Very confident. He, he, he puts his foot through the ball, doesn't he? He, he doesn't leave anything to chance. He doesn't float it in. He, he puts his foot right through it. And, you know, obviously, Jez Litton was missing, so he wasn't kicking. But I can't see any anything other than Michael Lewis continuing with the kicking duties. Yeah, I've never got when Willie says... We don't want the pressure. You don't, you know, we don't want to add pressure on him. This is the kid who's the coolest kid in the stadium who absolutely <laughs> soaks up pressure and adversity. I think he'd love taking on the tee. And I think, yeah, obviously it was, diff you know, we had time, didn't we, when we broke through and we could cut inside a little bit. But like, like you mentioned there, he was slotting them from the touchline, the, the ones that he missed. I mean, kicking into that Craven Street end, even in the summer, there's a wind, <laughs> never mind on a cold night and that. And it's always tough to convert at Craven Park anyhow when it's windy yeah. and that because of the way the ground's set out but I, I agree with you I think we've got to we've got to think now aren't we and be realistic and go look we've got two brilliant hookers in Jez Litton and Matt Parcel they've both got to play at some points but can you risk giving it to Jez and then if he comes off going oh Bachelor's going to have to kick because I know he kicks the one um, against Salford but he doesn't look comfortable does he Bachelor when he goal kicks it's not for me in with a T so for me Mike is on he's the number seven he's you know, the dominant half I think he's got to have given a go now and especially in these high pressure situations over the next four or five games 
games. Let's give him a go. Let's see how he can handle it because he, he looks confident with the boot. And the beauty of a left kicker is there's not many around and them little angles that right-footed kickers struggle with sometimes. I know you can use the other advantage, um, other argument, but I do like having a left-footed kicker as well for some reason. It just looks a little bit cleaner off the boot in my eyes. Yeah, and um, I know they performed absolutely brilliantly against London. Um, Matty Parcell at the captain's run. Um, I did pose this question on, on, on X about whether they do this all the time, but they uh, presented uh, Ben Reynolds with his shirt on the pitch. They we all huddled together in the middle of the pitch and had a, and a chat, and then uh, Ben Reynolds got presented with his shirt. Also, um, Matty Parcell was presented with something, and then on the screen... Uh, in Craven Street, they put up a montage of his, his best moments at Huntington Rovers. My question, oh, are they doing this just because the fans are there or do they do this all the time? And Jason never in the play, says, no, they do it all the time. And it's really special because all the players were looking at the big screen, obviously celebrating Matty Parcell's 200th appearance, but also Matty Parcell then gave a bit of a speech. Um, and you could see how much it meant to him. And, and for him to come away with three tries, against London. I mean, he showed how important it was in that game, but he's been a really integral sign and a, and a real catalyst for change over the last few years with the Robins. Yeah, he's... he's I, I always said what was when Tim Sheens was in and that we just lacked so much pace around the rook. And when we swapped Sean Lunt for Matt Parcell, I was like, oh my, how has this happened? And he was in a very poor team for a few years, wasn't he? But I think that's from 2021 when the team started finally getting a little bit better and a little bit quicker. He's just Sean Anthony and he's still up there in the top hookers in the league for me. I know it's, I wouldn't say it's the writings on the wall at the moment, but you know, it's looking more likely with JWH coming over and that. I don't think I'm ready for him to retire and if he if Ryan Alders as well I don't think I'm ready for them two to go but yeah Matt Parcell I think what he's done for Jez as well they both complement each other so much and I don't think Jez will have developed this quickly if he wasn't working with such a good player Matt Parcell but yeah I did a few obviously captain runs last year and um, when the with the press conferences when I was obviously at Olav and yeah, they always do that. Will is big on making moments special. Obviously we've seen the change rooms when they've got the photos of the kids and the family and that, and what it means for them to play for Rovers, the sentimental value, that family feel, that's what the massive on it, mate. And I think that's why this group are so close and why they're probably so close with the fans now, because everyone's connected. I know sometimes words and business jargon from Sewell and Lakin and all them lot can seem like words, but I don't think it is with these lot. I think they generally mean everything they say about being, this one club and connected family and hopefully that can transcend into something special this season or whenever the Willie Peters reign comes to and I know you asked the question last week about the contracts, I didn't t give you mine but for me, yeah, if I, I'd, I'd give it a few more months first but the way he's going I'd like to see you know, another two, three years for Willie Peters easy. I think what he's doing just um, is irreplaceable, really. And obviously, them lot across the river have just got rid of their coach and you're worried about who's going to replace him. And look, there's not many people out there. That's the case with Rovers at the minute. You're not going to get any better than Willie Peters. So for me, there's a no-brainer. I know he's here till the end of next season anyhow, but he bangs on about how much him and his family love it in East Hull and living in Beverly and all stuff like that. And um, for me, it's a no-brainer if he could. If he wants to stay, you know, however long, let's give him it, sign him on the dotting lad. Yeah, I mean, it ain't just obviously what he's doing at Rovers. It is a life choice, isn't it? It's where his kids are. It's what where he sees their future, and and so it is much more than just just a job. But you know, you know, hopefully, you know, he, he does lead us to silverware, and you know, and we all pray that he does. He is going to become in demand, isn't he? So, so it is, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see where that goes, whether it's too early to start contract talks or, or not. Who knows? I mean, we can't let the, the Robin Pod go past Joe without mentioning Agent Smith and Agent Gene and the fantastic work they've done uh, in the dark side of Hull. Um, the linkage of his coaching duties, Tony Smith and, and Stanley Gene. Now we can look back a bit more fondly at the time with the Robins and forget that, that bit where they uh, went to pastures new. But, I mean... It's a mess, isn't it, for them? And and I've said many times, long may it continue. I'm quite disappointed because I, I wanted it to continue. Yeah, I, I, I think it will. Yeah, they are, they are in a mess. And, you know, we can make all the digs, can't we, until the cows come on. But you know what? 
get a little bit bored now, don't you? But um, yeah, I, I think the writing was on the wall probably for them. It's just the manner that they're getting beaten. It doesn't matter who they are, you know. Obviously, we have a bit more of a thingy narrative because we're in the same city. But if you if that was a Castleford or a Salford or Smith, it, it, the way there, it's the way they're getting beat can get beat and they can get defeated sometimes but it's the manner it's the way they give up it's the way it's just soulless and yeah, yeah. It's, it's absolutely brilliant I hope it happens forever but yeah um, Phil B you know obviously he's been on the pod as well his photo and his caption was Agent Smith and Agent Gene mission complete you can stand down and I think that's where we'll leave it so yeah um, the job's done in the West Side boys and we'll see where it takes them and we'll see who's in charge well, that leads us nicely into Saturday's Challenge Cup quarter-final against the Lee Leopards, who have only won two games this season. One was against Featherstone in the uh, previous round of the Challenge Cup. And, of course, their only other victory to date this season was against that lot. Um, oh, let's say. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it leads us nicely into it. I mean, we've already heard from Derek Beaumont. He's given his thoughts ahead of the game on Saturday. Um Obviously, Lee missing, you know, a number of important players. Um, they went in Pape, John Asiata, Tom Briscoe, um, Tom Anon and, and Robbie Miller. And maybe that on Saturday, they're going to give them every opportunity to, to mm. play. Um, you know, they've got Matt Moylan, Black and Lamb. You know, they've still got some big players in that side. But the, the, the squad isn't the strongest way it could be. And this is a great opportunity for the Robins to, to get to the semi-finals of the Challenge Cup. Massive, and I think, yeah, Amon and Mulhern, I imagine it'll be one or the other, but to be honest, even listening to Adrian Lamb, he said, oh yeah, Amon, he's maybe, he's, he's, speed, he's sped back a little bit quicker than we thought, he's recovered a little bit quicker, and I was thinking, is that just the case of going, come on, like, we need you back, because their pack is decimated, um, and that's where I think this game will be won, you know, even if Mulhern and Amon are, going, are pushed and say, come on, you can play, even if you're 60%, the speed around the Rook and the way Jar Whitbread's playing, Dean Adley will be back, won't he? Um, Tangano or people like that, Mini, you know, Minchella in and around that 13 role, I think we will dominate them in the pack, and that's what we've got to do, we've got to strangle them, we've got to stop more, um, Moylan and Lamb who I don't think have been great I think they're very just going and from side to side they're not that free flowing I know last season there was a bit new weren't they on the block and everything was going right from injury wise and teams didn't really know how to play they do now and uh, and that's why Lee have got to change and maybe that's why it's not working at the minute they haven't adapted but I'm really confident you know I, I put revenge when the draw came out and I, I, it was probably just an emotional side of me putting that but I do agree with what Willie says in some sense where he goes we're not thinking about the final last year it's a new team but on the other hand I think you are thinking about it. you know this is the team that caused us absolute heartbreak let's not put it lightly and yeah it was great beating him in the league and great knocking him out of the playoffs he still don't give us a trophy at the end of the day does it where he's beating these puts us 80 minutes away from getting to Wembley again and yeah I think this team this Rovers team even the new lads they'll understand that we should have probably won last year and we won't get a better opportunity we've got to get back on the horse we've done it against Salford let's go against Lee on Saturday and it should be a, a Pat's Craven Park the atmosphere has been great this season East stand absolutely bouncing even the North and West are getting involved it's, so it's a, a good buzz around Craven Park at the minute and I think it's going to take a very very good team to come and beat us here again you know like Warrington did can Lee do it in the cup with a decimated side and Rovers on form? For me, no, but we've still got to be on our guard because it's going to be a very tough game and they've got nothing to lose, have they? They'll go into it as the underdogs, say nobody wins at Craven Park. He was all them excuses. And yeah, I think like, if we can put them to the sword early, like we have done in the last two meetings after the Wembley game, then we should be home and dry at half time again, fingers crossed. Because I think the way that we're going at the minute, we're coming out of the blocks firing. And if we're on form, what I'm noticing is it's try, try, try. It's not try, 10 minutes, another try. We can put 18, 24 points on teams in the space of five, six minutes and that can just kill you mentally and physically as well. So, yeah, I, I don't change the game plan. Change me, obviously, bring people back in. Jez, Dean Adley, um, Joe Bear, just all come back in for me. But, you know, let's go at it again. Let's not stop here because um, get through to the semis and we've got a great tough run in the league, which I'm buzzing for as well. Let's see where we're at against these so-called bigger teams. Yeah, if you missed the squad news, uh, which was announced earlier today, which is, of course, um, Thursday, Reese Butterworth and Leo Tennyson, they come into the 21-man squad. Ben Reynolds drops out because he's quick tied and Sam Luckley misses out due to a one-match penalty notice. Um, there's still no Oliver Gilgart, who's missing. Um, he's failed his HIA assessment or, or checks what he needs to 
to, to pass to be able to feature. Um, Joe Burgess, obviously, he missed the game against uh, London Joe. Um, you'd imagine Burgess in for senior if, if Burgess is fit again. Um, on the bench, who are you bringing in to replace, luckily, probably Dean Hadley? No, I, have, I think he'll go. I think he'll put Dean Adley back in the back row with Batch. Right. And then I'd put Stoughton, Tanganoa, Parcel, and then have uh, Yusuf Harding, Oli, or Tennyson on the bench. That'd be my bench. Go big. And obviously, Jesse Sue and Whitbread starting props. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because they're, um, they've gone previously, they've gone big on the bench. I mean, London, obviously, it was a different challenge. So the, the mm. bench had a slightly different makeup. Um, it is intriguing to see how we will line up, but you know the, the fact we've got uh, Jez Litton coming back, we've got Michael Lewis, we've got Tyrone maybe attacking threat in that spine there. Mm. Never mind Nile Evans, who seems to be having the time of his life since going to fullback. I mean, um, it's like he's played fullback for fifteen years, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, and Petter Hickel's played centre for ten years I mean, in the NRL. Yeah, but no, they're, they're them two look so much more confident, don't they? Well, I mean, when mate, when the when they're attacking, and you, you can almost see it. Do you know when it goes into slow motion, you can almost see where the play is coming. Yeah. When especially on that right edge, when that Nile Evans fits in, and then Hickel gets the ball. Um, I mean, Burgess will probably say playing outside of Hickel is an, an absolute dream, man. And what Hickel does as well because of his try scoring exploits at the moment, he poses a question to the defence because now he's not just an offloader. He just no. He's he's more than he's strong. And he's got a step and he's more than capable of setting the ball himself. So I love seeing that right edge attack. And, and I mean, prior to Gildart's injury um, and Opchick coming in, I mean, the way Gildart and Hall were linking up together. But it's, you know, it's, I said it on the last last week's Robin Pod. It's not bad, is it, when Tom Opchick is your, your replacement centre? Nah, it's not. And, that, and that's the thing. I don't think Tom's been that great. And I'm quite upset that Gilly's, um, mm. you know, Oliver Gildart's not back this week, but hopefully he'll be back for the trip to Catalan next week. But yeah, another chance for Opachet to stake a claim because I don't think he's got going yet. But yeah, I just love I love the way Nile Laval just holds up plays. It's that little move inside. He straightens people up. Then he's got that elusiveness to just get by him. And his one-handed offloads are killing teams at the moment. And yeah, he's... Um, he he's a he looks like a great pickup, um, and he seems to be absolutely loving it. Him and his partner, you know, he's had a few rubbish years, hasn't he, at Castleford, and I think he's come here and you know fell in love with the club quite quickly, and that always helps. So yeah, I think a big effort from the Span again because on the on the day they're, they're up there with the best in Super League. That Span when they're in that attacking free flowing moves that they're doing, it's uh, like you mentioned, mate. It's a joy to be old, and I think let's do it again. Now the standards will be raised for me because it's the biggest game of the season so far on Saturday. Yeah, and I suppose, Joe, on Saturday, I mean, patience is key. You know, I know we've scored points in the last few games and, and you know, like we are just talking about when we do attack it, you know, how good they can be. It's not going to happen every game, is it? There's going to be times. And, and Lee, yeah, the, the, the missing a few players, that said, it's still going to be a tough encounter. It's, so I think we, we need patience it, around Soul Group Craven Park because... We're not always going to be bang, 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 try, try, try. It's just going to be times in games where, where it is difficult. Of course, absolutely. And these are a good team. You know, let's not get too high on our horse and think because mm. we've won a few games, we're going to absolutely clean the floor with everybody because we're not at all. And yeah, well, you know, what, what's after this? Catalan, Wigan, Saints, Warrington, Lee. These games, these are where you get in the ground and you, you might win by four on Saturday, but this is knockout footy or rugby, whatever you want to call it. It, it, it doesn't matter how much you win by it's if you get over the dotted line at the end of the day. But yeah, I think the Rovers fans will be. Um like I said, there are going to be days where it's a little bit off and it's not going to be as free-flowing. And, of course, the opposition is getting a little bit better now. But, yeah, I think as their standards are as Rovers should as well. And let's just wait and see. But, yeah, the challenge cut's massive for us, isn't it? You know, two wins away from Wembley. Get over the line on the thing and you're looking at a semi-final date, probably at Edinley again and that. And, you know, we know how famous that win was last year. So, let's try and do it again and go better this time because I want to have a day session in London because I missed out last year writing for you all. Um, um, and then having to write in tears oh. as that number seven who shall not be named, and I hope he doesn't do it again on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when you you put it into perspective. 160 minutes away from Wembley, you know, two yeah, games, so, and then that's how you got to look at it. And and um, you know, it was a t I said to Derek Beaumont, you know, it's the TV company's dreaming it. The the, the finalist last season's finalists going together. Mm. Time on Saturday, you know, it's it's going to be. 
you know, I love Saturday tea time games. Um, probably it's my favourite kickoff time slot. So I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm just looking, you know what? There's there's a real buzz about going to Rovers. The fact that the crowds have been so good, I think you know, Peter's already said we sold upwards of nearly seven thousand uh, to the mm. game. You know, previous seasons, Joe, when we'd have got to this stage of the competition. You know, we won't be expecting crowds of, of what we are. Obviously, season ticket holders have to buy tickets, and you know, I, I just love the buzz when, when you go to Craven Park. Now it feels not just more than the rugby, but it just feels like there's, there's something special going on. It's it's a popular place to come now, isn't it? And do you, I mean, obviously, as you grow up and that, like I've followed them all my life. But when I was growing up, the one there was me and my mates, and then in our age bracket, there weren't many. Whereas now, you look at the secondary school kids and even the primary school kids. It is the hub to go to this Craven Street and go in the East Stand and sing a little respect. You know, kid, like the full age bracket from top to bottom is just absolutely buzzing and aligned at the moment. And yeah. Um, it feels like there is some brewing, and especially at Craven Park, you know, I love away days, um, barring the trips down the M62 when you're stuck in traffic for four hours, but there's no like Craven Park, and especially on a Saturday, let's make some noise, let's show the BBC, you know, why, you know, this club's a little bit special, and we've got aspirations of going one step further this year, so yeah, it's great, the atmosphere at the moment, and the full buzz around the club, and I know the players feel it too, don't they, because you can just see, after the game, the likes of Sam Luckley, Bachelor, Matty Staunton singing Red Red Robin, Rovers to Ladder, uh, little stuff like that. I know it sounds a bit daft, but not that doesn't happen at every club. You know what I mean? And you know, I, I do think like this bunch want to prove a point, and I think that starts on Saturday against obviously the team that hurt us last year. So you know that they'll they won't be saying it in the sheds, but you know in the stands it is about revenge, isn't it? Because we, we wanted to beat them last year, and they've got the upper hand. And you know, let's knock them out. Yep, Joe. Always a pleasure. Thanks for joining me on this week's Robin Pod Weekly. Now, anytime, mate. Great to be back on. Yeah, which is, of course, powered by Budget Ties Auto Centre, the only car specialist trusted by the players, club officials and supporters of Hull Kingston Rovers. If you went to the game on Saturday, make sure you are loud and proud. But for now, live, love, laugh and be happy.